Hey, hey, what's up, you guys? You know, I'm so used to saying day this and day that. <laughs> anyway, first thing this morning, we got to get the dual tires put back on the 83 here. I thought we were going to use it in the soybean field, but I think we're going to use it to this and do some ripping and chiseling, preparing some land for next year. I guess we'll see. Looks pretty skimpy without the duels on it, but transformation is about to take place. <laughs> Got to get unhooked from the grain cart because we used the forks on this tractor to move the tires. Finally got it on. And look what Dan did to my rim. We usually hang it with a chain there to put it on but uh we used the forks and manpower and it didn't work out too good <laughs> but we finally got it done deal you guys amazing what a little painter do right <laughs> all right you guys i'm gonna unhook the disc from the 72 here and I'm gonna hook the green card up to it The tongue on it is twisted. Actually, you might have to take that clasp off because the pin isn't going all the way through. I asked Dan about it or get a longer pin. Just called Dan and he said that that pin through the class like that is okay. So he's gonna get the adapter for the PTO and finish hooking the rest of it up. Let's hook up the 83 to the disc now. Let's see what this backing looks like. I believe we can get it. Yeah. Get this pin opened up. Come on, come on, come on, get in there. Oh, maybe I need to pull up a little bit. <laughs> Let's watch it drop in. It's gonna drop in. Just a hair. There we go. I drop it holes, it should be right according to how I unhooked. Did it pop out? Oh, wait a minute, or is the... I need to speed up the controls here. I guess I had it super slow with the peanut picker. Let's see, number one flow rate. Let's turn it up to about five. Now, let's see if it'll go ahead and pick it up. Wait a minute, what's going on? Oh yeah, the hose popped out, hold up. All right, now let's try it. What's going on here? There we go. <laughs> Guess I had to get the fluid running in the lines. That's still sort of slow though. Speed it up some more. Maybe seven. There we go. Okay. Done deal. Chicken salad time. <laughs> Getting Frank fueled up. I'm going to grab the 83 and fuel it up and carry it to where we'll be doing some dissing at. 
but I got to do some bush hogging first. Dan is about to hook up to the bean header over there. You guys, I'm sorry to tell you, but soybean harvest is mainly a Dan thing. <laughs> I won't be around much and I'm not going to be around for the first portion of it. Like him getting started. So that's going to suck. Danny is getting hooked up to the hopper bottom. Yeah, since we started using the hopper bottoms on the semi trucks, I don't be around much for soybean harvest unless Dan needs to move or I need to use the grain cart. So, oh! <laughs> I know you're wondering why there's still corn standing in this area when we finished corn over a month ago. Our neighboring farmer, he snaps the majority of his corn and use it for deer corn. And when you snap it, that pretty much picks the entire ear with the shucks and the kernel still on the whole cob. So that's what he's doing with that corn there and it only picks one row at a time old school <laughs> fellas are harvesting some grass there yeah we got to get out of the peanut land dist so that we can plant the cover crop for the winter as I said earlier I have some bush hogging left to do that I have to finish first but I'm just bringing the tractor over here so it can be over here whenever I get done. These soybeans there. Danny's going to hook up to this second hopper bottom and I'm going to go pick him up from the next farm. We just picked him up from where Dan is going to start. He's actually going to pick these few beans here first though. I just closed both doors on the hopper bottom because we don't want to start out spilling soybeans. <laughs> Looks like there might be a little problem here. We had to try and get the floor of the header level because it was bowled up from sitting on the trailer. So it's looking a little bit better now. Y'all remember, changed all the teeth on it. You guys, we're not gonna get to see him start. I gotta go pick up Danny. Oh, we were so close. <laughs> hey, don't be talking about my dusty dashboard in my dirty window, right? <laughs> Got plenty of cotton modules over here. This is right across from Mother Beaver Dam number two farm. He's bringing the truck here to Kudzu Farm. We took the first truck earlier to Seashell Field. That's the very first field that he'll harvest beside that at the shop. Back at the shop, just got on hook from the header. He done picked the two little patches here at the shop and we're gonna head on to Seashell Field now. Seashell Field. Then he's gonna carry the green cart to where we took the international, which is Kudzu Farm. Let's check out these beans here, you guys. Quite a few pods on them. They're not all that tall, but yeah. Let's see here. 
crack it open. It's dry enough to crack open with one hand there. There's your soybean. Okay. Man, I'm upset. We missed Dan starting both times here at the shop and at the field. <laughs> but anyway, I went ahead and took lunch in case he needs me. I just seen Danny. I thought Danny was supposed to be going. If Danny's going to be around, Dan might not need me to help him get moved to the next farm where we took the grain cart and the international truck. So in the meantime, I'm just going to be doing some bush hogging. I can hear Dan through the woods. He's probably about three quarters of a mile from here on the other side of Father Beaver Dam. But anyway, before I get started, I wanted to thank you guys for making me aware of my bent wheel, which really isn't a bent wheel. <laughs> Let me show you what's going on. So with a lot of bush hogs that are operated by the three point hitch, this is a three point hitch. It hooks up right there, one up top, two and then three over there with most three point hitch bush hogs when you got that pivoting wheel back there the tubing in which that wheel is always spinning around in which is why you got to grease it to help keep it from wearing but uh we've had it so long now and used it so much that tubing that that wheel is on there or the tubing that the wheel goes through is wore out so that's why it looks like the wheel is bent. Really, it's just leaning because that tubing is wore out. So whenever you see me going down the field and it's cocked over to the side, <laughs> see, see how much play is right there? See how it's leaning forward? That's why it looks like it's bent. But I still grease it even though it's wore out. We gotta get a guy to um, weld us some more tubing so that it'll be tight and it'll stand up straight. But anyway, yeah, once again, thank you guys for noticing. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna get greased up and I'm gonna get on to it. As I'm going by Beaver Dam above the lodge entrance right there, wanna let you guys know to be on the lookout for a video. I went to check on it yesterday. So that video is coming soon. It's about 25 minutes later Dan takes me asks me if I can help him move. He has finished seashell field there and I guess he left with the combine because the truck is there and the green header. Gleaner on the move. <laughs> Alrighty, there he goes with the header. I don't have to go back to the field, but I am gonna roll this tarp here. Uh, let's have a look at soybeans. There they are. He got a truckload there at least. He said they wasn't picking too good though. Only about 36 bushels per acre. That dry spell we had, man, I tell you, that dryness we had earlier this year is just bad on it, on just about everything. So long, seashell field. Well, we're back at it, you guys. The boring bush hogging. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm just upset because we couldn't see any soybeans harvested, man. So it's about 4.26 right now. I finished the bush hogging and I guess now we're gonna get a little disking done. I'm going to start on Mother Beaver Dam number two side. They hadn't moved that cotton yet either, but this little field is where I'll start at. I'm gonna disk it at an angle. That way, once we spread the rye, we can cultivate it straight. We're gonna get unfolded here. Pick out me a point at the end of the field, let it down, and off we go. Let's see, I need to set 
my rev limiter. I thought I had it set. 1800. 10th gear. And I lost my place at the end. <laughs> My first pass is going to be crooked. It's all good. How's it looking back there? Looks pretty good. Oh no. Yep, see? Crooked! I might need to speed that thing pick it up some more. turn to my right. No, I'm not because, well, too late. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and knock out these short side. Either way, oh, I'm going to have to wind up on this end of the field anyway. So. Don't want to let it down too close to the ditch because then it'll cause it to wash down in the ditch but anyway we're disking It's dissing up pretty good. Those peanut bushes are deteriorating and that's helping it a whole lot. That's why we were able to pick that last day because the rain that we got on those bushes started them to deteriorate. But anyway, I'm driving down to this end because I only need to make two end row passes. So I'm gonna start down here and then come back on this end and I'll be done. All right, you guys, I figured I ended a little different this time since we weren't able to get any combine action in the soybean field on the first day. That sucks. <laughs> but I hope that you guys enjoyed watching in spite of, of course, you know, I got a job to do, then got a job to do. 
So we do what we do. <laughs> but anyway, you can still smash that like button for it. Throw a comment in the comment section. Let me know what's on your mind. Share these videos too. Get them out there. Help the channel to grow. Anyway, Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. You guys stay blessed. You guys keep encouraged. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.